Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Look at that. Hey, fat man. Oh. oh, man. You're way more dressed up than I am. I'm so sorry. I thought we were doing Christmas. I know. I don't have a Christmas outfit. Why the fuck? Who doesn't have a Christmas outfit? Um, I mean, I could wrap a red towel around me. Are you going to be wearing anything else? <laughs> I don't know. Would you want the answer to be yes or no? I don't know. It depends how uh, swole you've gotten. <laughs> well, I'm going to say yes. Okay. You do want other <laughs> things underneath. No, I think, uh, you know, what from you what I've seen lately. Okay. Yeah. Well. Could um, be a little Christmas um, Christmas cheer. Christmas with cheer a with a bow around it. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, shots time? Shots, 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 That means I don't know in Ukrainian. Shots, there. Oh, God Almighty! What did you have? Yours was very oh. orange. I hate whiskey, dude. I hate it. I, yeah, it I'm looked like you whis- didn't enjoy it at all. Oh, hey, Jaja. It's like Scotch whiskey, bourbon whiskey. I love because so it's like sweeter and you're rounder. You're crying so much. I'm crying for something else. <laughs> <laughs> but the shot did not help Whew. Oh, Actually man. it's kind of helping now okay. Feeling less sad Okay, Feeling that's less good. sad already it's, This is why they market wow. alcohol to people with depression Hey man The, the pain's not going to go away on its own <laughs> No it's not uh, um, I, I feel like at some point I had a Father Christmas hat A Christmassy hat But I feel mm-hmm. like it may not have made the jump When I moved I might have decided that it had limited limited use in a limited space environment. So I probably just discarded it. Discarded okay. it. Okay. Well, for next year, you know, just remember to um, bring a hat. Well, By I'll the tell way, you one thing. The, um, the previous years that I've been in New Zealand, because I was typically coming home for Christmas, we just made do with the flat Christmas tree, which was a, a tiny old plastic like Kmart tree that we'd reassemble and every year yep. there'd be fewer and fewer limbs and, and bits on it. And it was all just a little bit sad. Um, this is the second year now I'm not going home for Christmas, but the first year that we're in our own place and I, was, I said to KC, I'm like, I want a real tree. I want a real fucking tree. I want a real big tree. Get get the get the pine in here, man. Did you get and the so real one? We have a real a real tree now and I tell you what, you, you smell it when you come into the room. Oh, oh it just, it lifts got the that, spirits. It's got that new car smell, right? It's got exactly that. Every yeah. time you come inside, you're like, oh, that's fresh. Is someone cleaned? And the answer is always yeah. no. It's just there's a tree in the corner. Mm. Yeah, I love a thing that just makes it feel like it's clean, but you don't but have you to don't clean have to do anything. anything. That's the idea. If anything, it's making it more dirty because it just shits leaves everywhere and you're constantly seeing a growing mound of them underneath. But... I've I've never had a real Christmas tree, and I um well, like my family had the same Christmas tree for like twenty five. It might even still be the same one that we've got now. Like yeah. I I genuinely think it's the same one. Yeah, and it's like kind of one of those fake ones that just like kind of Snaps bends together. and it's all like yeah. Bleh, yeah, and it doesn't look. It looks weird, and it's like kind of. I mean, but it's out. It does the you job. It's, it's it, you make it the memories. You know, it it, it it's it's a substitute. But there yeah. is something nice about the the real one, and I was shocked yeah. because it was thirty dollars, and we just like got it in a supermarket car park. Like it wasn't really? even that big uh, <laughs> a hassle. It was like three minutes away and thirty bucks, and then we had a real tree. But then, how'd you take it home? Just shoved it in the car, <laughs> put the really? seats how down. Big, how big are we talking? It's probably around my height. So what's that? One point eight meters. Just laid down the back uh, seats and shoved it in the boot. Yeah, well, yeah. that's your answer to everything. Well, there aren't any other compartments to put things in. All right. We're we'll off to a flying start here. Um, so, Merry Christmas to you, I guess. Merry Christmas. Can we say Merry Christmas? We're like uh, nine days out of Chris. I think we're, we're within spitting distance now. I think this is a safe, a safe space for a, for a Merry Christmas. Absolutely. And this is, uh, this is everyone's favorite episode of the pod. This is my... And by everyone, yeah. I mean... You know, us. You and me. You and me. <laughs> this is our favourite episode. maybe Sean. Maybe Sean's? I don't know. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Took a, took a stab. We'll wait for feedback. But yet, no, this is this is definitely my... I look forward to this every year. It's a it's a good chance to um, 
good chance to catch up, you know, with yeah. you, Nick. Just <laughs> we never really get a chance to talk to. these days. I know. Um, but yeah, it is, it is fun. It is, uh, it's a good chance to reflect on the year, mm-hmm. which I always, I love, I love a reflection. Mm-hmm. You know, I love a reflection. Mm-hmm. Uh, we will probably have some laughs. We'll probably have some. Well, I wouldn't go. I wouldn't want to guarantee laughs. Maybe some um, ho hos. I'd like to set expectations low. Couple of ho hos right here. And if there's an like a laugh that comes along, people will be like, "Oh, that's good. That's more than I expected." So I prefer I like to say to, this is a not entertaining episode, and then surpass that. I like to go with the with the uh, kind of the mentality of uh, you want to get a laugh every thirty seconds, and if you go back through every single episode of Deep Four, you will notice that I'm trying to get a laugh. At least every thirty seconds. Am I getting them? No. <laughs> That's why you have that all clock the time. ticking over in the back, which is I've got a, a, like almost I've psychologically got a, threatening. I've got a I've got a a basket an NBA replica <laughs> yeah. stop clock because that's what it's called. I love that. Okay, I was waiting for something funny there, so we haven't. We haven't I think, succeeded in that 30 seconds. I think but. you trying to do a, a sports uh, song. What are they called? Song. Jingle? Sound. Sports blah, 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 sound. Because you sounded like uh, Popeye or some shit. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Oh, I eat a lot of spinach. Um, I Actually, think I sounded more like um, Porky Pig than I did. Yes, um, that's what I was thinking of. Yeah. I get Porky Pig and Popeye confused. It's <laughs> because you're attracted they, to both of them. They have the same vibe. <laughs> yeah but then uh yeah and also we're you know we've got our christmas songs they both get this, dipped this in year. olive oil does that work um you kind of cut me off when i was right. saying something there well, that's okay to well, say fine. something about okay. olive oil. well i'm glad that you brought this up because i actually have quite a few complaints so i didn't mean to bring the mood down but should we just air our dirty laundry up the top okay what's going on I just feel like you cut me off a lot. Um, <laughs> Did you hear that car horn? <laughs> yeah, there's a lot I of support. Um, support out there for me, and I feel like it's quite often hard for me to get a word in edgewise. Um So, I don't know. Do you want to say anything? Yeah, I think you talk too much. I think you talk too much, baby. And I think this podcast needs a little bit more of. Michael Mango love in and a little less of Nikki naughty Nikki <laughs> Welcome to Deep Thought everyone. Thank you for joining us in this festive mood. We have drinks. We have company moths and we have moths so we're we're all set for a for a a night to remember sitting through the internet with me this week my friend michael hey ho 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 sounded like santa coming father christmas yeah ho 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 oh god ho ho mrs claus you naughty little girl this is fun. It's very unsettling. And I'm Nick. Hi. Hey. I hope you're doing well. My uh, voice is spot on, dude. It was really good. It's, it's like also you were there. Daniel Plain view in a way. But <laughs> I can see that. I can see it. Yeah. Yeah. How have you, you been? Inspiration. I'm good. Um, what did I cut you off I'm, from saying? I honestly have no idea. I just like telling you that you cut me off. Okay. Um, so in Michael news, um, new segment. Okay. Uh, I mean, most of our segments just do tend to be specific <laughs> thing news. So, I think that's. I think that's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> they just become more niche. <laughs> um. So I am planning. So my last day of work is tomorrow. Oh, that's quite early. And it wasn't going to be until oh. this morning. So I had my flight booked. So we're recording on a Thursday. A little peek behind the curtain. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, don't tell them all our dirty secrets. <laughs> yeah, dude. Um, and I was going to fly on Thursday. 
and I had booked my leave. This is really interesting. So just <laughs> really pay attention. to I'm not even going to try and stu- like cover yawns. Like if they come up, I'm just going to, I'm going to let you know direct. Just throw them, throw them in my face. Yeah. So my flight was booked for Tuesday and I had let, booked my leave, right? Get this. I had booked my leave from Tuesday uh-huh. and my boss was like, why didn't you just take the Monday off? as well that was weird why'd you leave one day you have the weekend you have one yeah. day yeah and then you leave for like two weeks and i was like i have no idea and then they said why don't you just take that day and i was like then i'd have to bring my flight forward and then they're like why don't you bring your flight forward and i was like yeah so <laughs> i just did it i just did that well wow. this morning in a meeting and now i'm going on saturday that's amazing I know. And did, so did they still make you pay that leave day out or were they giving it to you for free? No, there's nothing for free in this world. Yeah. Even so. So that's like th- four, three days earlier than you were expecting. Well, yeah. I mean, it was stupid of me to not book that in the first place because it's one day extra of leave, but you get three, but you, your holiday starts way it's earlier. Three days earlier, yeah. So, and also not to bring a little COVID into this Christmas speciale, but um, the I don't know if you've heard, but the cases here are just skyrocketing. And in, in New Melbourne. South Wales... Oh, I heard New South Wales, New, yeah. New South Wales is going through the proverbial roof. <laughs> yeah. Didn't stick the landing there. Well, um, I mean, it's just a sort of a normal phrase that you interrupt. I know, yeah. <laughs> through the <laughs> proverbial... <laughs> Roof. <laughs> That's actually pretty. It's funny when you do it. Wait, I take that back. I take that back. Okay. That's your you Christmas almost present. Gave me and a your birthday present. That's <laughs> yeah. your Christmas and birthday present. And your engagement present. Oh, no spoilers for geez. the rest of the show. So we'll leave that. Yeah. We're saving that for later. We'll build up to that. Um. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. They're they're going through the roof, and it's not even Omicron. It's delts. Delts. So is that because New South Wales actively like opened up? Like why is there now spikes? Have they loosened things recently? My theory. <laughs> Do you want the official <laughs> explanation? Of I want to start with your theory first. Yeah. And let's see how close you are to reality. Okay. I My theory is that it's Christmas parties. Uh-huh. Around this time of year, everyone's getting together. Everyone's having a little smoochy smoochy, uh, I presume. Um, and you know, it's the it's a end of year kind of thing, wind down. Everyone's People getting, getting a little close. close. People getting reach arounds in the bathroom, at the office. Not yeah, I mean, Bojo was out having Christmas parties, mm-hmm. and I think that's what's happening. Is there's a lot of bl- Christmas blowies. By the uh, by, the water cooler, and by blowies, you're of course referring to the particulate matter in the air, which carries the viral load from one infected person to another. Exactly, it's air particles. Air particles blowing air particles into each other's mouths and penises. <laughs> yes, um, the Omicron thing. Is there any Omicron in Australia? Oh yeah, you bet your ass. It's got in. I don't know oh, if yeah, there's baby. Omicron in New Zealand. I might. There I like. Is. I just today, don't know. Today got in. I saw it today. You heard? Oh, really? Yeah. Mm. Two cases. At the but border is, or loose? I don't know. I think this is... I think they caught it like they're in in, in, uh, in quarantine. quarantine or some yeah. shit. But th- we talked about this last week. This whole fucking thing. One person in the whole world has died from Amicron. Yeah. One person. What it's are just, we doing? I mean... Get your shit together. I mean, so far it is less severe, but it's hard to know whether or not that's a result of the high um like herd um protective immunization rates kind of effect there where like uh, just today actually new zealand is at 95 percent single dose vax and 90 percent double double dosed so we've the whole of nz the entirety of the country is at 90 percent now which is a really impressive figure i think we were slow to start but it just fucking went and yeah. um, that's that's an incredible... And, of course, it's only the available um, demographics. So I think soon they will be rolling that out to kids from five up. Um, but, uh, yeah, even so, even with that asterisk, it's still a really solid number, which hopefully will blunt any kind of um, 
future variants from from really kicking too many people. Um, yeah, and you'd imagine also when people start getting their boosties that um, that's going to curb even further. So we're going to only – we might see a spike around the Christmas time uh, festive period, but we should also start seeing that drop off presumably – well, maybe not transmissibility. Although, can I just say this? I heard I met my the first person I've met to have COVID. Oh, who I'm quite not close with, but like they work in the vague department at work that I work in, mm. and she was very open about it. Um, and she said I had so many questions for her, and she said that. She got it on a on a camping trip, which is already weird. Mm-hmm. She was double vaxxed. Every one of her oh. friends is double vaxxed. Yeah. She's my age. Then she went home and she he shares a house with one other person. And they spent, you know, uh, the night or two following the camping trip, watching movies on the couch, sharing guacamole. Oh, that's And do it. she then she got the thing. Then she got the notification saying you've got uh, Delta. Wait, 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 wait. Good. The notification because she had symptoms or she'd been exposed? So her fr- she was on a group chat with the camping friends. Uh-huh. And then they started going, oh, shit, I've got COVID. Oh, someone else picked it up and she was a contact. And so yeah. she was like, oh, shit. And then she woke up feeling one day she was like, it was like night and day, woke up feeling Boom. It wasn't the the classic things that she was looking at for. It was like foggy head and like a bit of a headache and stuff. And she was yeah. like, there's no, I can't remember the timeline of this, but I think she went and got tested and then so did a bunch of her friends. And then on her group camping group chat, then it started to go, holy shit. I just got a call from the, you know, department of health saying I've got COVID. And then she did quite soon after. Yeah. But then her housemate who she, uh, you know, shared been guacamole with. with, didn't get it, and she like was sharing the whole house with. So, uh, and th- anyway, that brings me, brings me back to the point that I was making was that when she asked about that, she's like, "How is that even possible?" The doctor said that's part of what the vaccine does. It mm-hmm. does stop transmissibility. It doesn't mm-hmm. always do it, but in some people, it can work more effectively than others. Yeah. So, it's. You can both be double vaccinated, but one of you can get it, and one of them can go. Oh, you know what, COVID? I can't. I can't deal with you right now. Yeah. Get out. Take of a here. seat. Yeah. Reject it. Yeah. And uh, someone else could be like, "Hey, COVID, come in. I'm lonely." But isn't that amazing as well? Like when we think about one year ago, you know, this time of year is a year is a moment for reflection. And if you look back to where we were a year ago. End of 2020 was a very kind of uncertain and unsettling and scary kind of time still. Oh, yeah. We oh, yeah. hadn't had any sense of vaccine rollouts yet. It was the first sort of anniversary coming up of all of the stuff that um, kicked off. Yeah. I was not going home and there was an uncertainty as to what the border situation was going to be. Um, and then the vaccine stuff started happening. And within yeah. the space of a year we have been able to collectively as a society do an incredible amount of work and make an incredible amount of progress and save an incredible amount of lives with the medical technology. Like it it is an amazing place that we're in now, even as it continues to, um, you know, rampage on. Yeah, you're totally right. It's, uh, It's interesting. Yeah, it's interesting to reflect back on where we were this time last year. And what we were heading yeah. into. And by the way, I think this time last year, we were actually, my vague recollection of it was that we thought we were past the worst of it. Like yeah. we thought we, we were, no this, this is pre-dealt. Yeah. So we thought we'd done it and we're like, oh man, COVID was over. Yeah. And then we we're like fucking Delta. And then I was, you know, we were in Melbourne, we were locked in for, you know, roughly the same amount of time as we were in 2020. Yeah. And then I also like to think, you know what I do? It's like kind of, uh, I don't know what the word is, but it's like, it's like nostalgic, but it's like dirty nostalgia. Like going back through my photos to like January and February, 2020, and Mm -hmm. just seeing like memories of me hanging out with my friends and doing stuff and going, look at you, you You. innocent little (laughs) 
prick. You, you don't no even idea. know what's coming. Yeah. I highly recommend it. Go back through your photos, guys. Uh, and just look through, just look through just, just before COVID hit and yeah. just look, look at yourself and just re- try and remember that time. And I then, still have some really kind of vivid memories and photos from the snap lockdown because for us remember like i think in australia the sense of covid's onset was like a a a slow boiling frog it was a this is happening but it's over there and it's not that important oh but that now there's okay well that's because it's always over there it was australia because and new zealand we're so isolated that it's always happening it never really affects us the yeah. world's the global stuff but i'm specifically talking about australia here and not new zealand in the oh. sense that when yours i mean i agree with you but in the sense that then when it started to affect australia it was like well you know new south wales isn't really taking it too seriously they don't seem too fast but you know queensland's got a bit melbourne seems okay and then one state like shut their borders and then all of a sudden it, like i just get the sense it was like a bit of a oh oh this might Oh yeah, this is definitely getting wor- okay. Yeah, now like it was just like a slow ramp. Whereas for New yeah. Zealand, we were one nation. You know, they didn't have individual territories that were under different control. And when they just called that shut, like snap lockdown, it was incredibly early on a global scale, from when the first case had come out to when they decided to shut the borders and lock everyone in their houses for what ended up being five weeks. And it was a mm. full shutdown. It was a everything except. Um, supermarkets and, um, you know, the medical places, as I've said previously. So for us, it was normal life, normal life, normal life. Hmm. That's a weird headline. Everything about humanity has changed <laughs> like yeah. overnight. And yeah. I still have from those, um, that time, I remember on the first or maybe second day of that snap lockdown of what was at the very top told it's going to be a month. And a few days uh, into that month, it became five weeks as well. So at the very top of that, I was going for a walk because you were able to do local walks around your suburb. And I still have videos from that night of the lockdown, wandering around at sunset and hearing absolutely no one. You could walk down the middle of this road that is a busy road past my house and there was no one. You could see no one. You could hear no one. You couldn't hear cars in the distance. You couldn't hear anything. It was so post-apocalyptic. It was Mm. incredible. And those kind of memories, I think, are, are really quite ingrained in me. Like I wouldn't have to go back to my calendar to that time to feel that way again. Like it, it really stuck with me. Sure. And and you you guys weren't even, you know, comparatively locked down. I mean, you were locked down harder, but it wasn't short and hard even yeah. that long. So like the trauma is real. Like the when you, I mean, we we both had good years in twenty twenty, mm-hmm. so it was tough to reconcile that. And I think that's what we were talking about last year around this time. Yeah, but having some distance from it now, and also going through lockdown yet again through 2021 like it is definitely traumatic like thinking back on it it is definitely a traumatic experience even after the, even after at the time it didn't feel like it just felt like mundane and boring mm-hmm. you know for me personally i'm sure other people had it worse mm-hmm. but it was like it was just the mon- mundanity mundanity what's that word mundanity mundanity, whatever. mundanity yeah uh that like was you know the only real problem and 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 i had plenty of stuff to keep me occupied and i'm perfectly fine you know you know with nothing you know to do um but yeah having some distance from it now it's like fuck like if we had to if the the, just contemplating the idea of going back to it now Mm -hmm. it's like oh oh boy and you know what you know the fucked up thing is we don't even know what's around the corner yeah, and that's and that's the thing we've kind of probably got this like kind of, you know, a part of that trauma is a like maybe a fear now of, you know how everyone used to be like, to you know next year's a new me and a new year woo, and now everyone's like, oh let's just, but what's yeah what's let's coming? Just st- let's just tread lightly. 
No one make any loud noises. It's like fucking, uh, what's that John Krasinski movie? Uh, um, a quiet um, place. Quiet place. Every, I don't everyone's know going into the. Everyone's going into the new year like a quiet place. Yeah. Did you like a quiet place too? Nah, boring. Didn't too much. Too much. I mean, it was fine. It was a good movie, but too much action. Too much action. I hate action. That what action? Uh, too loud. <laughs> and not enough sorry. dialogue. Your complaint is <laughs> okay. Sorry. Yeah. What? I was about to make the point that your complaint about a quiet place was it was too loud, and then I realized you were being silly. No, I wasn't being silly at all. <laughs> what do you mean you weren't being silly? <laughs> it was loud. It had loud, loud noises in it. A quiet place. Oh, what do you think of that movie? <laughs> too loud. <laughs> It had jump scares. <laughs> Too loud. <laughs> and not enough dialogue. <laughs> Genuine criticism. <laughs> oh, you're so <laughs> ridiculous. You're a silly person. I am, I guess. But that's what I think. That's so funny. I, I, like, I stopped myself halfway, that, halfway through that comment because I was like, oh, of course, he's being silly. That's a good joke. And no, no, you weren't. Right, 100% so oh, That's so funny. Too uh, loud. So, on the topic of last year, how was your this year? Yeah. Big picture, um, better or worse? Oh, better. Well, so, so hard to say. So hard to say. It was, um, it was different. I, I've had, I had a big, it was a big year, um, I there were a lot of things that I was proud of this year. Uh, one of them was getting through lockdown, you know, pretty I- intact. Mm-hmm. Do you have um, a sense, like, do do you know what the running tally is for Melbourne's lockdown days now? It'd be over three hundred, right? Two hundred. It was two hundred eighty. It's the most lockdown through. city in the world. world yeah. uh, which is, you know, hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> like what are the chances? Yeah. Um. So you know, I was happy with doing that, and and, and more specifically, um, because we had multiple different lockdowns. By the last lockdown, by the last final big lockdown, had managed to, um, actively curb the drinking during lockdown because that became. I mean, I'm not sure if it became a problem, but it became like a crux crutch mm-hmm. um it became like something I, I was leaning on to spice up the day yeah or to you know make time go quicker or just yeah. and i don't I'm know sure you weren't little... alone yeah and it was so easy to do uh, and it worked that was the other thing it worked um and so i was i was happy by the last one to to really like curb that not like completely but yeah. like i did was i actively try to curb that so that felt good to kind of flex the muscle of self-discipline even if you know it was only for a couple of months and then also uh, um joined to that um i managed to exercise throughout the last lockdown like quite yeah. consistently yeah to the point where when we well, got you ran a fucking it, 100ks right yeah when i ran 100ks in like september which was cool, but I mean, I stopped running pretty much after that. Yeah. But like, it was you know that was a fun thing to do, and like it was fun seeing your 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 times like increase or, yeah. or get better Progress, yeah. over the course of that. Um, and then like yeah, keeping up exercise throughout throughout lockdown to the point where when I came out of lockdown and went back into like the gym, it wasn't like starting all over again. It was yeah. like oh, like you know, it's. It took a couple. It took a couple of weeks, but it wasn't like everything was shot out the park. So I was happy for that. Yeah, and you um, made all those um, friends and the trainers at the gyms you visited as well. So you, you've really got um, relationships there that you can return to and and build upon. Is this? Uh, I don't get this joke. Yeah, anytime fitness guy that you were oh, um, yeah. testing with. Yes. Well, that that kind of leads me to the other thing, which is that um, my. I ended a relationship yeah. uh, also this year, which was like a massive 
thing and that was like you know only a couple of months ago mm. but um that was like a, another huge thing so it's been a, it's been as last year was a, a transitional year for me professionally in many ways or in one specific way and that uh, you got a this job. one yep. yeah this one was another um transitional year and and it kind of all leads into this uh, i don't know i wanted to talk to you about this on 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 this episode about this, I don't know, you know, it kind of leads into this uh, feeling of transformation. When you go through big life events, when you go through trauma, mm-hmm. um, as with a relationship ending, um, you can't help but like appreciate the fact that you are growing as well. Like you are, you are breaking to use a, a, a shitty analogy, but you're, you're breaking a muscle and you're repairing it, stronger, you know, slowly. Yeah. yeah. And you're hopefully getting stronger. So, yeah, I definitely feel like I am in in the midst of a big life change. And the last time I felt this way was when I, you know, uh, funnily enough, my last relationship ended and then I went traveling overseas with Dan Mm-hmm. Um, and then I moved to Melbourne mm-hmm. and I remember distinctly feeling at that time as well that I was like, this is something, this is something that I'm going to remember. And sure enough, I, I do, I a al- already yeah. six years on from that, I already, already kind of feel that, but I know that this is, it's funny being in, in like a time where you're like, I know I'm going to remember this time because this is, a, this is like growth period. Mm. Yeah, it was, um, it's always interesting watching on from afar when other people are going through things that are really tough and yeah. particularly when there's a distance involved as well, where it, it's one thing if you're a local uh, witness to some of that stuff where it's like, oh, let's go and get a coffee or, hey, why don't we go bowling or, you know, whatever, you know, let's have a drink. Um, yeah. And you can be sort of a part of it, but it's it's different, I think when you're removed from it, but, and, you know, still very invested in these people. Um, and, I, you know, I was sad to hear that it ended and was wishing the best for both of you. And um, it, it, there is the possibility, right? If, if we're completely honest, there is a possibility in make or break moments like that where, where big changes happen, that's, that some things don't recover properly, right? Sure. There, 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 there are people we know whose son died bend or, or something, bend or break. and yeah. they just never get over it. Yeah. And you can't really blame them for it because it's it's trauma. But you know, some people are never the same after something's happened. And yeah. when you feel removed from things like that from a distance, you feel a little bit powerless in it. And and it was interesting for me, like I when. When it was going down remotely, I could tell that something was happening, but you weren't yeah. telling me anything about it. Um, and I didn't know for several weeks, I think, after it had happened, um, or a couple of weeks at least. Um, but I knew that something was happening, and I was just waiting and, and feeling like, well, shit. And I, I would check in and say, you know, like, how, how are you? Are you okay? And you'd be like, yeah, yeah. man, it's, it's okay. We're, we're all good. Um, yeah. But I was... Um, waiting to see and you know it sounds like it was difficult um, and yet um, I feel reassured that you are in that growth sort of phase afterwards where things are coming back together and, and there are reasons to be optimistic and excited about where this new direction or whatever takes you um, but it, it was something I was thinking about this year because partly because of the COVID thing you can't help but feel more isolated from some of the people you're close to in this day and age. And just out of that concern, wanting to do as much as you can without having the means to, um, yeah, to, you know, support and, and help friends. Yeah. No, I, I, I appreciate, I appreciate you saying that and I appreciate your, the way you went about it at the time. Cause I, I know that I kind of alluded to something going on, um, you know, weeks before I ended up 
you know, actually telling you. And I have a funny way of dealing with things as well. You know, I um, kind of, um, I'm like kind of reluctant to openly go, you know, hey, um, you know, uh, my relationship's ending. Uh, like kind of broadcasting that. Yeah. Um, even though it's with like close friends and, and you're obviously one of my very close friends. But I ha- I, I didn't really like didn't actively like tell any tell anyone. I just kind no. of like I told some people that I needed to and then let it trickle out. Um and that includes my family. My family just like heard, you know <laughs> Through um, the grapevine. Through the grapevine. Yeah. Um but uh no, I, I I appreciate you you I mean you're always good in those situations, but yeah, it's um it is like it is a traumatic experience. It is definitely a trauma. I've I've gone through it twice now when you've when you've been living with someone and then you aren't. Yeah. Like in a day you're just not anymore and you're not um you know spending any time, you know, you don't you're not spending time. It's just like it's it's weird how it happens. Like you just like It is from, the New you go, Zealand you go from going to into zero. lockdown. Um yeah feeling of like normal 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 everything's different yeah yeah and it's like it's a you go through like the shock period and like the and then like after that wears off you go through the you know is this the you know the the right thing to do and like you go through all those you go go through all those stages but i think that the thing that can get you through and the thing that got me through um it's just like knowing that if you know it's the if you know it's the right thing to do and you can hang on to that knowledge even though you're going to be going through some you know some choppy waters knowing knowing that all of that information um if you can hang on for a little bit it will kind of mend and mm-hmm. get better and get easier mm-hmm. and i had gone through that before and you know so had she so I think we both kind of it was it's it's interest it's an interesting experience not to not to like well I mean we'll talk about other stuff I guess but um it's it's an interesting experience going from okay so starting a, a getting into a relationship at twenty seven and then ending at thirty two so you know give or take five years uh. Being single at 27 and then coming out single, not coming out as single. Hi, I'm single. (laughs) A lot of Um, people would be like, yeah, that makes sense. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And then, and then coming out the other side as single on, on the, at 32 is a completely different experience. And it's so, it's, it's what, it's like crazy because people, people, when you're 27, you're, you know, at least this was my experience. You're, you know, your friends are, you're more connected with your friends. They're kind of uh, going out more. You know more people. There are parties, all that stuff. When you're 32, you are starkly reminded that that your friends, a lot of them, are settling. This is now the settling down period. Like mm. this is the w- wave of of life, and usually the wave of life you start to go down and settle into okay i found like i've been dating this person for a long you know a certain amount of time we're looking at houses you know we're looking at kids mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden you're coming out of the wave yeah and you're, you're trying like, to ride the wave you start you know, surfing I'm, again cowabunga exactly dude. you're like i've been to single town before i know how we go wait where did everyone go <laughs> yeah um but and so that that, that is interesting to yeah be around that and then you start to wonder uh is is this is is this something that i want is is like marriage and kids and the house and and all that stuff something that i that i actually want is this is this who i am going to be is this who i'm not going to be mm-hmm. um because you know you, you the society tells you the whole time the, uh, the whole time uh, as you grow up society reinforces this idea that school 
university, marriage, kids, house, bank. Yeah, job. Um, yeah. Job. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> not in that order. Um, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> you got a marriage, a mortgage, and some and kids. kids. I should get I a should... job, I think. Yeah. What's what's I what's think. what's McDonald's Honey, looking for? Yeah. What do you think about me getting a job? <laughs> I would fucking love it. <laughs> um <laughs> So you start to think about like to so grow up thinking um, when you're like you know at various points of your life that you are, that's who you that's where you're going to end up you're going to end up with a uh, a partner and a house and some kids and a job and I mean you 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 must relate to this hard and and a lot of uh, gay people must relate to this hard because that's that's part of what the shattering is of that of your worldview and and also for your parents and your loved ones it's like i thought i had this idea that it was going to be life was going to be this for them or this for me yeah and and then it's not yeah and and it, that it doesn't mean it's going to be that way forever i'm talking back going coming back to hetero um because i'm acknowledging that um you know it's it's permanently you know different for homosexual people yeah. it's all right you've played the woke card we get it you're a lefty all right am i off the hook you're off the hook now <laughs> i've got cancel immunity right now guys <laughs> exactly i've got five you're minutes in, of cancel you got immunity. five minutes of cancel immunity so oh, i'm gonna you drop want. a few end bombs no <laughs> um <laughs> now's the time can't cancel me now um but yeah, so you start you start thinking about like what what's my life gonna be and and how does that fit in with the vision that I had? Did I even have a vision? And also then you start questioning why why are like some of my other friends and I'm not saying all of them why are some of my friends um you know settling down are they are they doing it because they think that's what society thinks of they should do uh, or they're doing it because they they really want to or they're tired of and then you think, why, why, why don't I feel that way? So there, do you, these, do you feel like questions. there's a connotation with settling down, which is negative where it shouldn't really be like settling down? Because I think when people talk about settling, there's a connotation, right? And I think settling sure. down almost has brought a little bit of that into sure. the vibe now a little bit. It probably didn't historically, but settling down should be yeah. seen as a really nice thing right like you've sure. found the love of your life ideally and you're you know in a stable relationship with strong goals and you're making a family and or you know whatever that means but it's interesting to think that that now has in some way become slightly pejorative yeah just no, me I, no i agree because it's like oh um Oh, she settled for him. You know, yeah. it's like it's like it's it's almost like implying that you have lowered your expectations or your ambitions. Yeah. Um, where maybe it should be called like nesting or something. Yeah. Like it's because that's that's probably what it's it's more it's, it's like. cheesier, but it's like raising a family, like making a family. That is the core of what these people are doing, right? And that that's yeah. something I think really aspirational and 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 lovely for a lot of people, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, um, yeah, it's interesting yeah, I, just to touch on the, the the gay thing you were talking about as well, because obviously there's a very different time frame. I think in the way that um, the 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 gay life, if you were to generalize, and the the um, the relationship chart over that that era is is very different, or historically was very different. Maybe it's it's a bit more similar these days where people can be more confidently out in high school and that sort of thing. But, um, you know, I was 21 when I came out and that's well past high school. Um, and, and, you know, well past teenage years when most gay people start getting out there, you know, confident in themselves, probably financially independent now because they've started working and so they're not necessarily dependent on the people who are putting a roof over their head and all that kind of thing so for a lot of people there are pressures that they can't avoid they can't be themselves until they're self-sufficient or self-sustaining right. so yeah. a lot of that stuff it's like well i can't come out until 
I know that I've got a roof over my head or guarantee of income or whatever it is. So that just pushes a lot of that stuff into the 20s for the LGBT sure. community. Yeah. And so then yeah, you're doing that. your teenager stuff in your 20s, which is getting out there like, oh my God, it's wild. I can be free. I'm doing my thing. You know, like this is, let's fall in love and then fall out of love instantly. And, you know, dating and romance and, and the teenage like experimentation and all of that is like 20s. Yeah. And uh, that's why it sort of correlates a lot with the party and drug scene and that sort of stuff for certain sets yeah. of that um, sects of that LGBT community. And it's only sort of in the 30s for for us, generally speaking, that people are then starting to think about like long-term relationships and, and settling. Because, of course, biologically, if you're looking at kids, well, it's only ever going to be, well, if you're gay, uh, sorry, if you're like men, um, adoption or surrogacy or something like that right so it's not on a on a ticking time bomb kind of um fertility window kind of question either so yeah it it is just completely in its own um time span yeah i i totally i totally i totally get that (laughs) i do i mean you you can get that that's yeah um yeah, so I, I guess that's it's kind of how I feel though. Like I feel that I am not, I genuinely feel not there. Like I, I I'm not, not. It's not all of my friends that are, are settling down and have mortgages, but there's a there's a significant amount of people that do. You have babies have in them. your friend group. Oh yeah, yeah. Like uh, quite a lot of them. Yeah. And if they're not, if they don't have them, they're you know actively talking about it and thinking about it and i sometimes i'm just like i have i'm not there at all like i'm so not there i feel like i'm still i feel like i'm where they were in their 20s in terms of mindset and you know it makes you wonder like what am i gonna am i going to want to do that ever is that important to me uh is it is it important to me that i that i do explore all of those options or do i really you know do i am i happy living how i am living Hmm. it's a very it's confusing yeah it's a strange era and i think it's also constantly evolving like generation to generation the expectation of us now is different to those 10 years behind us and 10 years behind that and and so on and so on um well just to put this in a little perspective George Costanza from Seinfeld was 32. He was my age mm-hmm. in season one of Seinfeld. Wow. That really puts it all in perspective. It really does. I George. Didn't, didn't really watch Seinfeld. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's been a, it's been a, uh, it's been your, when your relationship ends and you, and, and you, you come out of it. I mean, I, f- I feel that the, your late 20s and early 30s is a massive transitional period in anyone's life, probably. Uh, and a lot of lot of things change in that time. And when you go, when you when you enter into a relationship, you kind of enter into like some sort of cocoon or something. Mm-hmm. Like you're kind of, you're not, sh- you're not like, you're not unaware of what's going on in, on in the world, but you're kind of sheltered in some way and when you reemerge on the other side of it it is um it it forces you to confront all of these questions mm. because because of the circumstances of your friends and because of you know your own circumstances i am now i've gone from living with one other person we had a nice place you know um you know which we invested in we decorated and by we, I mean she. I didn't do anything. Yeah, I mean, but it was it was not. To this podcast, <laughs> yeah. Do you remember when you did none of the assembly of furniture or moving? Yeah, I mean, not a goddamn thing. But I was. It was mine, okay, <laughs> because <laughs> because I was lived in it. Um, but then, like now, I'm like living with housemates, yeah. and it's like that is like a weird transition like when you've gone from with three every years space living, in when i open this door is my space to my space is my room and then there is shared space and shared bathroom and shared kitchen yeah. and do you mind if i like it's different and dynamic it's, you've just gone through the opposite of that yeah in fact this is like this year this is the first time in the 15 
15 years now that we've known each other. Jesus mm. Christ, I just did that mess and that was you're old that was something um that i've been in a relationship and you have been single first time i can't well this is my oh, first you've relationship you've ever been in one relationship yeah, yeah. wow so, so th- this dynamic now is is inverted and finally i have the power i've been craving wait i had power before <laughs> yeah you didn't realize it yeah pussy power what a way <laughs> <laughs> that's why you're single is that what that is <laughs> now you've got the pussy power now I have the pussy power I bet and again the, I'm I squandering bet. it who's the um, okay just because it's Christmas let me ask one <laughs> oh god I think we're outside question. of the cancel window <laughs> uh huh I love that you're predicting a shit question um, <laughs> who's in in same sex relationships uh huh is it true? <laughs> I've heard a rumor. Um, <laughs> is there like a masculine and feminine roles? Do you adopt? There can be, but there also cannot be. Um, so okay. it, it just like most things with humans, it, there's every possibility. So you guys is are correct. human. So what's that? So you guys identify as human. Yeah, um, I okay. try to see myself that way, but sometimes I'm okay. just like that's where the I was told that gay people are, comes from. Are anything but yeah. <laughs> Still um, funny. Still um, funny. The the, the, the there are definitely uh, it just depends on the relationship. Some people would would naturally just lean in towards um, certain archetypes or certain behavior styles, and and, and so what are you might guys? find a compatible partner. I think that we are fairly equal in in that respect. We don't really. Well, let's get Casey on the line. Casey, are you there? Uh, he can't hear you. Oh, what a okay. shame. Oh, no. thought he was going to phone in. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'll, um, we I'll should have, have more phone in listeners. I don't know if we should. I mean, I don't edit the podcast, so yeah. I think we should. Yeah, I can see why. Um, yeah, no, I think we're fairly egalitarian. That is one of the good things in my... I mean... It's a biased perspective, of course, but one of the things that I like about a, a same-sex relationship is a certain degree of um, equanimity. That's not the word I'm looking for. Um, Equality. Equivalency in certain respects. Like there's a cert, you can, there's, there are certain fundamentals in the way that you, I don't know, just the, the male brain is more similar in some ways to another male than it is when you're communicating with so opposite saying- genders. You're saying that you think men are better than women. That's why you uh, no, have chosen I'm, I'm, men. No, two women can be in the exact same um, position well, where together they have certain um, compatibilities. Bitch all the time. Uh, but, you know, like two guys can share clothes. Like I can steal his clothes. That's very handy. Um, mm. I can, you know... You just buy the same... You, just buy, you have one wardrobe. Well, kind of. We're similar... Yeah sizes like i can he'll hand me like i are, are you though i've seen him he's he's hench af and don't get me wrong you're, you're on your way nick but you know you know casey yeah i've got some of his old workout gear yeah well maybe you, you're kind of selling it maybe i'll try a little uh, same sex yeah, relation. what do you got to lose you're free you're free as yeah. a bird free as a bird baby yeah i'm gay now yeah i think you just choose just choose Is what that you how want it to works? be. Yeah. Do I have to fill out a form? Yeah. <laughs> at at, at uh, the DMV? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you have to go to the RAA and it's like this whole process, but then you do get oh. a card, so it's fantastic. We've already been gone for an hour here. Yeah. Where are we, going? Mean, Where are we going from here? Are we, are we just keeping it breezy? Yeah. I mean, I, I might like to talk about my year a little bit. <laughs> no, I don't think so, dude. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Time for another shot. Dude, you're gonna get me drunk. <laughs> well, if you're joining the gay community, what are you, what are you better shoving? get ready. I'm drinking gin. Ooh, I looked okay. at whiskey, and whiskey. then you sort of turned turned me off it with your previous. Is that a very big glass or a very? Oh no, it's okay. It looked. <laughs> yeah, it looked like I can tell. Yeah. It, oh, no, I wish I could. It did look. Yeah. The perspective is weird. All cheers. Right, cheers. Clink. My queers. Do you say cheers, my queers? No. Oh, God. Yeah, chase it down with some white wine. <laughs> I'm really enjoying mine. I got a Hendrix gin. This is like a shot of Hendrix gin. <sighs> Goes down smooth. Oh, oh. I got monkey shoulder. What is monkey shoulder? 
Oh, sh- it's a brand. Yeah. It's a monkey shoulder. What are you meant to drink with? Is it meant to be a smooth sip or is it like a mixer? This is the second time for a, as a gift I've been gifted this uh, specific whiskey. Because people know and, you like monkeys. And I don't like it. Mm, okay. And I'm too embarrassed to say anything. You don't like whiskeys full stop? Or is it this one? I like very specific bourbon whiskeys. I don't like blended malt scotch whiskeys. Sure. Anyway. Yeah. So let's talk about you. How was your year? I, I think I'm in the same boat where this year was better than last year for me. Really? I um, Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Because you're a fucking TV show or whatever. Well, that's the thing. Like, I had so many kind of really incredible moments, like, across this year. And, and I know last year we were annoying everyone by having rather enjoyed 2020. But this year in particular, like, it draws into, into sharp relief the difference in the way New Zealand life was to most of the world. Because, right. honestly, life for me, has been very normal for Is all it? but a month of the year, basically. Yeah. And yes, we wear some masks in public places, but that's about it. Like, I've been eating in restaurants for like a year and a half. Like, nothing has changed in in mm. most of my day-to-day life. And I work from home, so even the places where other people were affected, like KC was working from home for a few weeks... It doesn't affect me at all because I already do this. So, yeah, the normalcy for me has been a pretty constant factor. And then in that context, I've just had a really good professional year, (laughs) personal year, right? Like Like the best of your life. Yeah. I mean, I can't really argue with that. Like my show came out in January. Like we'd filmed it last year and that was a huge achievement. But then it came out and we got to hear people like watch it and enjoy it and feed back to us and be enthusiastic about more. And then there was like a delayed relief a release thing where Australia got it five or six months later. So I got a second dose of that when it launched in SPS. And then again, months after that, when it came to the U S UK and Canada. So there was like a sort of sporadic, um, delight in, in seeing some of that feedback come yeah. through like we got in the New York fucking Times, we yeah, were in the dude. Guardian as a like a recommended show. You know, <laughs> there was some. You're fairly... on my face Facebook feed as an SBS as an on demand ad. <laughs> ad. Yeah, which was the the peak. Um, <laughs> but like that that like the the real yeah, yeah, your your friends are lo- your friends are liking it like that. That's like how, what could you what more could you ask ask for? That's like it. You you put out a show. It's actually good. Your friends don't have to lie. Yeah. Uh, just speaking from experience, it's like a massive relief to not have to lie to your face. Yeah. And then your friends actually enjoy it. And then, like, you hear from, you know, other people through other people, through other friends that people like the show. Put her on. Grace knew that we were talking about her. Put her on. Tell her, tell oh, her she's on the it. pod. I missed it. Call her I back. I'll call her back. You want me to call her back right now? I do. I think you do should. Do you actually? Te- yeah, you should. Tell yeah. her she's on the podcast. Tell her Tell her we're doing the Christmas pod. Why are you putting it up to your, your headphone? Should Hello. we put it up to the microphone? Hey, sorry Hi, about that. Sorry, it's late. I've just got one really weird question. I, I, should tell you, I should tell you right away, sorry, that I'm in the middle of recording the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I just wanted to be up. For, I, she can't. That's why I, I put up the speaker there because my uh-huh. hi, Grace. Um, oh, but no, I. No, is it okay? you, you can't talk right now. You go. No, it's all good. I I just wanted you to know that as I took this phone call, that I am currently recording this. So you need to be very careful about what you say. Very careful about what I say. Okay. Um. Fuck shit. Can't. Oh fuck! Oh god, Grace, no, no! Oh, we're gonna have to scrap this whole episode. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> um, I thought you were gonna tell me as well. Sorry, I have to let you know that I'm drunk. I am also drunk. I should tell you that that I am drunk. I uh, can I just oh, say I'm also okay, good. Grace. I'm also I'm drunk. drunk. Can you hear Mark Little? I'm also drunk, no. Grace. Oh okay. I, I'm trying to hold up my speaker to the the. Microphone. Hi, Grace. I am also drunk. Can you hear that at all? 
I did hear I am also drunk. Okay, well, yes. that's that's Michael. That's the most important message. Um, cool. Thank you so much. Enjoy your podcast. No worries. Have Bye, a good Grace. night. Love you. Get Liddy. Liddy, 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 Love you so Liddy, much. Liddy, it's time for a third shot of gin. Woo! Woo! What are we watching? Pair of the dogs. <laughs> this is basically the same spirit. <laughs> okay. Have a good one. Thank you. Bye. You. Bye. Bye. Love you too. Love you so much. Bye bye. Love you. Did she you say go. love me? She didn't say she loved you. Can you include a little bit of that? Because we've got a star on our hands here. Yeah, I'll put a little bit in there. That's a little famous. Yeah. Famous shush. Um. Anyway, you were talking about, uh, I don't know, coming out or something. No, I was talking about good grief. I was saying that I'd had a really good, qu- like, good queef. <laughs> still not going to go. You did watch the wrong show. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Should have been. Uh, That's a show I'd watch. You, I know you would. Um, but yeah, so like having that, we, we, we filmed it last year and that was its own kind of special and, and cool to be in that creative process and then have it come out. That was a different sort of feeling and it was yeah. satisfying. And then we had this sort of roller coaster across the start of the year because we wanted to make a second season and we weren't sure exactly how it's going to happen. And then, uh, you know, one network said no and then another one said yes and we kind of got back into it um, towards the end of the year and basically wrote for four months straight. And in fact, today, the reason I'm very happily having a drink is that this is basically pens down end of the second season writing process for the most part until next year. So we have basically written now we just handed in third drafts of the the second season and uh until the read through in in uh early january um i won't have to do any more on that so if it's the first first couple of days off ahead that i've had in in four months um so that and you chose today to do the podcast i wanted to celebrate man i was like yeah well, let's fucking well, do it i'll cheers to that buddy. yeah cheers, cheers. Clink. like i i can't tell you how excited i am like to, to get this second season shot and to show it to people because i i'm really excited about it i think it's going to be really fun we're doing some cool things there are people within our team so obviously they're biased but like some people in different departments who are not responsible with scripts and story and production and everything who are just coming back on board to do, you know, makeup or that sort of thing or um, the production side. They're like, someone said like, oh, this is, I I think this is a better season. Like, I think this is, I think you've upped it. I think this is a good year. And that's really cool. Like our international network, AMC, is like giving us notes and they're happy tvnz is happy like i'm just it's i don't know i feel pretty proud of 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 the accomplishment because it was a hard slog for four months but i think we've ended up in a really cool place dude i i'm so fucking proud of you and like you're the other thing like so you've got you've had season one which people loved uh, and not to blow smoke up your anal, but like people <laughs> did love it. Like people, like my friends watched it and loved it, like genuinely loved it. Yeah. And then you've got season two coming out. Like it's, it, it that, that in itself is a, some validation. Yeah. And on a, on AMC, like it, it is crazy that I think you're one of the few friends that I know that is truly you're probably maybe one of two of my friends that I know that has truly just swung big, gone, gone big, gone for something that they really want to do and is absolutely crushing it. That's oh, awesome. That thank is awesome. You. Thank you. That's really But you are hear. though, dude. And you're not, it's not, that's not, that's just the tip of the uh, fucking queef. <laughs> that's the tip of the queef. Tip of the queef. You got yeah. Cheryl, You got. You're doing video games as well. Yeah. This is and escape rooms. Like, yeah. what the fuck? You're yeah. fucking doing it, dude. Yeah. Sherlock came out a month ago, and that was really well received. And it, it's interesting in the video game sphere. I know you're not like hugely up in it, but there's a service called Twitch, which is a live streaming. I know about Twitch. Yeah. Okay. I'm just. I treat you sometimes like a grandpa, just in case I'm, you know, I need to explain some of these things. My my eyes on Twitch uh, usually when I talk to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just watching League of Legends in the side of the podcast. Um, League of Legends. Yeah. Okay. You could have just nodded and gone along with it. The um, the uh, the 
one of the joys of, of the video game side of things is that people will stream themselves playing the game. So you can, mm. if you're like me, a narcissist, oh, really? just go and watch people playing Sherlock and sit oh. in, sit in the, like the chat and, just, and masturbate, and and, masturbate you know, take yourself back. to a yeah. sexual place. Um, <laughs> okay. But it's all me, baby. But like, I was lucky enough to get to write a lot of the major scenes in that game and then if I'm lucky enough to be there when they're watching, like they're doing the end of the game, you can see on their face and, in, in, you know, you can see from the people watching and, and, and engaging with them, you know, indecision about what choice to make or like emotional turmoil because of the things that are happening on screen and then satisfaction. You can hear people say like, oh man, that was, that was rough or that was good or that was cool. And fuck, that was like, what an ending. And that's so like gratifying wow. because... You get to see in real time people, your work having effect on people. It's, wow. It's, it's very, very cool. So you are just watching on on the internet, just watching people play the game that you made. Yeah. I mean, not solely me, of course, but yeah. yeah. Um, so it's amazing to have those sort of two parallel career tracks going, sure. where it's like I could potentially be doing season two, season three of Good Grief, and then... Um, video game thing is also ticking along in this way like this, who would have fucking that, thought pinch me dude, right? that is oh my god that's unbelievable it just it genuinely it makes me so happy to see my friends doing well like Thank it you. makes yeah. me so happy to see you doing so well and like i like not even not even doing well just like just doing well in something that you want to do well in yeah do you want that you care about games and tv shows i can't yeah. even believe this dude i know i, can't, I feel I so i feel even so believe this. so lucky that the things it's i get to do are the things that i like because it's i un- know that like 98 percent of the world work for them is not the thing that they really exactly. like doing right but but you but you swung big and you hit big yeah and i was it's very used- lucky but it's 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 somehow working out I, I, yeah. it's working out huge man and like look you're only fucking 38 years old like <laughs> yeah. by the time you're i look 50, great for 38 you really do but seriously you're you're at the start of your career it's weird how crazy yeah. is that yeah you're, start of, you're at the start of your career you're already hitting home runs like it's gonna it's gonna get better from here unless you get me tooed <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i'm terrified telling you about yeah you keep warning me keep telling you about the me too movement i and how gonna get you. <laughs> just brush like it those, off like this like the sandworms in june <laughs> yeah that is the me too movement they'll get the you sandworms yeah. in june. no but seriously dude i am so i am so you know what I, I i i had this thought the other day that i have a couple of friends like you know maybe you had this too you go through a period where you're you're maybe some of your close friends you are competitive with or 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 uh, jealous of in in certain ways, but I've never had that. My my closest friends, you, I'm not going to name who my closest friends are because that'd be, <laughs> it'd be it would be problematic. It would make them it would make them jealous and competitive. Uh-huh. But I feel like my closest it's just friends, just me the, and your the, mum, right? Yeah. I'm not competitive with my mum anymore. Um, <laughs> once she got that vice principal gig, I was like, you know what, Fran, Fran. You're, you're the teacher. You, just, of the you, house. you, you worked hard for this. <laughs> uh, but there, there, there are. Is she a vice principal? My... Oh, she was principal, dude. She was. Oh, shit. Prince. Yeah, man. I call her vice principal because she was a woman. <laughs> in my head I don't feel like anyone wants to be principal <laughs> <laughs> only a man <laughs> luckily she never listens to the podcast or supports oh, me anyway I'm sorry um, friend but no I, I feel when you tell me things that you have uh, successes that you've had and this also applies to some other of my friends that I uh, truly love that I, there is like, there's just complete, ha- like uh, I completely share the happiness with, with you and mm. them. And yeah. that, that to me is a sign of a, of a, of a true friend. Um, 
where where you don't feel any sort of competitiveness with them or i mean you could be friends with someone who you're competitive with but you there's no sense there's, there's only pure joy and happiness and you share it with them yeah and i feel like that's that was something i was reflecting on a couple of days ago and i have that with like maybe three of my friends mm. and uh i i love that feeling i yeah. love that feeling of of just completely being happy for them and be yeah. completely being happy for what you've accomplished over the course of you know it's culminated in the last year or two it, it has but yeah. it's been years of hard work and you've like i said before you've you swung big and yeah for people that swing big it it doesn't always work out that's yeah. the risk. That's and, the risk and it with may still when it comes go, to the... <laughs> go pear shaped. But right no, but now, it, it I'm, actually, I'm very it, happy it actually, to... it actually probably won't, Nick. Yeah. When you talk about like when you think about like actors and comedians and musicians, people that have to devote and creatives in general, people that devote have to devote their life to their art and their craft. Otherwise, if they don't devote themselves, they're not going to make it. It's not like being a fucking accountant no offense to accountants or a social media manager no offense to social media managers but the devotion to it is the key and the only way that you're going to get uh, the only way you're going to get anywhere so i respect the big swing and i'm so happy that the big swing for you has paid off and you deserve it man and thank you i'm just like i'm just so like proud that you're my friend and Me that too. you Talk to me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, I always talk. I took it. I took it too far, but like, I am. I in a way, no. I was being serious. Like, I am proud that like I have a podcast with my friend who I massively respect and I'm massively proud of, and I get to talk to him all the time. Like, that's the greatest. Thank you. I I really this is a, a real delight doing this, and I know it is narcissistic in the sense that for the most part we're talking about ourselves to ourselves but i i always look forward to it and i always yeah, too, know man. that i'm gonna enjoy these two hours or whatever they are yeah um and that it'll be enlightening or entertaining or um encouraging and you know i love checking in with you and 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 watching on as you know from afar as as our lives progress and we get closer to this eight year mark now yeah. where it's like <laughs> The, yeah. the the progress that our lives has made have made in this in this period is is kind of insane. And um, we are we're in the like we have this like unique, um, we're in this unique position where, as we were talking about like COVID before, uh, just before it kicked off in you know Feb March twenty twenty, we have this journal, every, from every two weeks yeah. consistently right through yeah. of like this whole thing and like if we like who knows how long it will last we don't yeah. know yeah but like i don't feel like i i would like you know i don't feel like i would want to stop anytime soon no it, like the idea that we just have this like journal yeah that we just are logging every two weeks is remarkable it's beautiful yeah i agree uh, we're getting two up our analysis here, aren't we? This well, let me before. let me let me go further and say that I think it's a symbol of love, and I think that the feeling you're talking Absolutely. about of feeling happiness for the other person without any asterisks on it—that's love, man. I love I you. Fucking and love I really you dude. I fucking love you. I fucking I genuinely grateful fucking love for you. it. I fucking love the shit out of you. Um, say yeah. it back. I did. I said it. I said I love you too. Okay, I didn't um, hear it. Okay, well you're talking over me, so. Again, this brings me back to the start of the podcast where I had a few I can't issues. accept love. I had a few I accept, issues. I accept, uh, I can accept negativity more than I can accept positivity. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that's a sincere problem that we need to start addressing. I should also say that when I'm reflecting on this year, that outside of the professional sphere, one of the true delights has been getting to move in with my boyfriend and live in a house together and in a world where everything has been very distant and removed and COVID-y. And yes, I got to see you and my sister in, in April and my parents came over in June. Um, so there's been glimpses of, you know, the old life, but in that um, space, getting to move in in July and what's that make it now? Five months on 
um, you know, sharing a house together and and getting to be in, in that comfortable two years in kind of phase of a relationship has been a real treasure and a real um, yeah, fuck. delight and sense of achievement. I completely forgot about the whole thing. You've like, yeah. you have done, you have moved in with your partner. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And, and, and yeah, like I said, coming up on two years now, which feels like it's flown by, but it's all been like COVID Wait, you, era. So you haven't lived together. You haven't lived together. No, 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 no. Since July, but two years of relationship. Um, sure. But like that, that has been simultaneous with all of the COVID era, um, which is, you know, been a time distortion field. <laughs> um, but yeah. uh, like what a, like I, I, I feel proud of, like looking back at 2021, we've rattled through them, but you know, show coming out, working on a second season, working on escape rooms, game coming out, uh, ongoing long-term relationship, um, physically working out, going to the gym, you know, all these things. I feel like I've had like quite a good successful year. Um, I'm, yes. You I'm definitely proud to be of on myself. the up and up. Yeah. You're proud of yourself. Yeah, I am. That's big. That's big. Yeah. That's, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not all the time that, I mean, from experience, it's not all the time that you feel proud of yourself. No, not at all. And those moments where you do feel proud of yourself and I, I feel that in a way, um, just to bring it back to me, hmm. just because I feel like no, the yeah, listeners probably getting bored with talking about you. Yeah. Um, just with like, when you're going headfirst into Breakupville, and you know it's going to be hard, and you do it anyway because you know it's the right thing to do. When you, it's it's probably it's probably a similar thing, in some broad sense. When you you feel proud of yourself when you go into something, know it's knowing it's going to be hard, and come out of it on the other side, um, you know, optimistically or or, or thinking yeah. that that it's going to be for the better like that's what li- that's that's what life is uh is made of i it, guess it is a testament to character to uh strength and um integrity i think being able to keep looking forward and keep in context the choices that you've made in the places you want to go i think it like i massively respect there is a bravery to a breakup, which I think goes underspoken, uh, under, yeah, under, under said sometimes where the, sometimes the, this, um, there is a, a fear of hurting people that, that actually causes more hurt in the long term. And I think that it, it takes balls to confront uncomfortable truths. Um, and, and no one wants to go through. <laughs> something painful but sometimes you have to do it for everyone's benefit um and i respect you massively for okay you've and that's why you're a cunt <laughs> sorry my headphones just died as you're saying something beautiful <laughs> what are you saying can you sum it up in two seconds <laughs> uh i was saying that i i i really respect and admire you for um, doing the hard things, which is like coasting through life and, and having it all easy doesn't make a, uh, an interesting person. It is right. it, the, the true sign of character is how you deal with problems and with strife. And I yeah. really admire the mature way and, and philosophical way and, and compassionate way in which you approached the difficult things that happened in your life this year. And, and, uh, I'm optimistic that, the ways in which you handle that will set you up for positive things to come. Yeah, man, I, I appreciate that. And I, I agree. Um, yeah, it's, it's funny how it's funny. The older you get, the more you kind of learn about life. And, um, you know, I, whenever I speak to my dad and I'm sure when you speak to your dad, he, they like to impart life lessons and I can already feel that kind of transition into wanting to impart life lessons onto someone else. Mm. Like it's kind of, it's just like what, how life is. Um, but I, I definitely feel like there are certain things that as you get older, you realize that everyone 
has gone through some sort of pain. Mm. Like everyone. Yeah. And they're all kind of just and anyone that hasn't is not really someone you're interested in hanging around with. But I Yeah, I mean, I don't even know that I know anyone that hasn't dealt like hasn't dealt with their own type of pain like i wouldn't i wouldn't want to compare different types of pain like some people have been with got have gone through absolute like hell yeah and some people have gone through like you know just i don't know daddy issues or something like people have everyone is living with their own pain that's one thing that i've learned as i've gotten older that everyone has their own shit i have their has their own shit and they're trying to cope with it. And life is really hard. Life is really hard. Even even for the best. As if succession has taught me nothing else. <laughs> yeah. It's Great that show. no matter what, no matter what you have in your life, no matter what assets you have, no, more, no matter what you have around you, your life can be really hard. I mean, I don't that, think you're meant to be empathetic with the people in succession, but I've never empathized more with any characters. <laughs> in my which life. okay, which succession character are you? Oh, I, you know what? It's so easy because I was thinking about this. I was thinking about it with regards to my family uh-huh. last night because I watched the finale last night. An incredible episode. I'm not a I'm not a TV guy. I Apart know. Yeah. The, the 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 three shows that I watch, a good grief. Okay, very good. Thank you. I'll pay Thank you that you. 50. Yep. Um, <laughs> Succession and Curb Your Enthusiasm. Yeah. And I am what I watch I mean I I binge watch Good Grief because you know I'm a I'm a, I'm You're just a, a man. Yeah. I'm just a man and I only have so much self-control. Yeah. But with Succession and Curb Your Enthusiasm. Yeah, I I let it go. You yeah. know, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll watch an episode here and there. Also, an hour episode, get out of here. What are we doing? But I love I love the show. Okay, here's my here's my um okay, here's what we are. I mean by we I mean my family. Okay. My this is gonna be actually I just realized it's gonna be me. <laughs> I mean they're all shitty characters. Every so, I mean yeah. no one no one no comparison to any character is gonna be favorable in the no, succession it's not gonna universe. Be flattering. So my sister one hundred percent Sarah Snook was the name Shiv, Yeah. My brother it's Kendall. <laughs> uh, we'll just leave that. And I am, I think I'm a mix between. Great. Uh, what? <laughs> no, 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 here. no, I'm like Kieran Culkin and Roman Con- and uh, Roman and the. Um, Tom. Connor. No. Connor. Yeah. I, I always Boo. thought of you as a Tom and Greg. No, you didn't. <laughs> no, I can see that. Yeah, a con- half comma, half Connor, half Roman. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like easy breezy, but also really sarcastic. Yeah, I'm probably in the Shiv space, I suspect. Well, you know how many two people I've told that you went to school with Sarah Snook since you told me that? <laughs> so many people. A lot of people, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm glad that it's getting out there. Before we get into the grand finale, it is is time for the outro um thank you for listening i work on this quite a lot um so here we go sorry dude sorry dude sorry did you have something to say there's no i in we i mean okay i'm not gonna i'm not gonna take the bait if you've enjoyed this kind of thing thank you very much because we appreciate it we like knowing that there are people out there um taking the time out of their days to listen along to our bullshit it's um very gratifying and i hope that it brings you some joy in these strange times there are more episodes there but you know that it's at deepfort.podbean.com or in your uh, podcast feed there's a twitter feed.com slash uh deepfort there's a facebook page which has some news articles and that sort of thing there's instagrams with clips and glimpses of michael in his santa suit there's a soundcloud.com forward slash deepfort where it's where you can find your Christmas carols and uh, jingles and things of that audio nature. And as always, you can send us a email to deepfort at gmail.com and we will answer it and address it on the show in our famous mailbag segment. So thank you for listening. We hope you have a wonderful holiday season. And now the fun begins. Michael, when I stood up, I realized I was definitely drunker than I thought I was.
Oh, dude, me too. I, I fell down the stairs a little bit. Oh, I'm so sorry. That's all right. All right. Well, I think you, I think I went first last year. Yeah. So I think it's your turn. Yeah. Um, we, we've we hit that magic time of year where we're, it's, we got to celebrate Christmas. And the best way to do that is by a Christmas song. Um, so we've spent, I'm going to guess, several months um, on Michael's end and definitely a long time on my end uh, making some original tunes for you. Um, last year, good year, I thought. Um, strong year. Um, very, very. Yeah, you're, you're spliffing a blunt right now in the... Um, you're ripping a fat puff. Um, I'm just getting, I'm getting ready, dude. Um, yeah, it's, it's that festive seas. Um, I'm looking forward to this. I, I can't wait. This is, this is Christmas for me. I love hearing what, what you've been cooking up. But uh, you, you are correct. Um, I think I should go first this time, and then I'll give you the right of reply. Okay, so uh, let me, as you download that. But before you start playing it, let me give a little bit of a. Um, uh, an insight into my approach for this this song. We all like to think about the good times at Christmas. Um, you know, time with your family, summer nights, food, drinks. You know, you get to rest. Um, There's this relaxation vibe. Um, but I think there's another side to Christmas that needs to be addressed, which mm. is it can be kind of grim you know, or lonely or creepy. And this year I felt like it was my duty to try and capture that side of things. Um, so I'd like to present my song, A Snowflake in Hell. Oh, God. I feel like this is, this is uh, political. <laughs> <laughs> Bernie <laughs> Sanders and I have got together. <laughs> It's a snowflake. You sound like Tucker Carlson over here. Yeah, yeah. All right. I uh, so wait. So this is a a depiction of of what Christmas hell could be. No, it's like it's just trying to capture some of the unsettling, unease, the angst, the ennui. So there are negative emotions sometimes in the Christmas vibe, and I just wanted to encapsulate some of that unsettling nature you know go a little bit more into the darker side the yang rather than the ying or vice versa you know so okay um, yeah okay well i can't wait to hear a uh, snowflake in hell give me the cue and i'll play it I 
Some of all parts combined to Break in a day designed to A snowflake in hell Don't speak to strangers, they speak to me Prowl the streets, kids he free I saw a man, he saw me I saw a man, he saw me don't move a muscle or they will see Force a smile, grit your teeth I saw a man, he saw me I saw a man, he saw me I don't speak to strangers but they speak to me Prowl the streets, can see free I saw a man, he saw me I saw a man he saw me Don't move a muscle or they will see Just a smile with your teeth I saw a man He saw me I saw a man He saw me Oh, shit This is a real song <laughs> Shit. What the fuck, dude? That was an actual song. Yeah. You gotta, that was you an gotta act- make an actual song. That was an actual song that I would listen to, though. <laughs> well, thank you. What the fuck? That was so Nick. Oh. And so, like, Tom. Well, it's interesting you said that up the front, because I was, I was going for, like, an apparat. I was kind of aiming for, like, an LP5, like a kind of uh, restrained kind of electro rock sort of thing. But yeah, I mean, Tom's in that area, isn't same, he? Same, same yeah, same place. Same wow, that was. Uh, so can you can you just recap a little bit for me what that was a what was about? Sure, it's just it was just taking. It was, some, it was esoteric. Yeah, it's esoteric. Um, but it's it's like just taking some of the sinister. It's taking the Christmas imagery and seeing it through a sinister eye. You know, just just seeing the darker side of it all, and oh and the kind of unsettling or haunting images that you can bring along with that and then just well, making a song out of it well that was it was haunting it was like so it was genuinely something i would listen to and you, by the way your voice uh, it holds up <laughs> thank you thank you it genuinely holds up because you don't do anything you don't put any effects in your voice do you no i mean i put a, a equalizer and stuff on it but no not really um wow Oh, that was. Uh, I'm. I'm. I'm gonna need you to send me the lyrics. Yeah, I'll post them in the um in the. Well, we're gonna put it up on um SoundCloud and Spotify and that sort of thing. Yeah. So I'll send them all through with that. Yeah. Well, wow, that was. Uh, that was very good. Thank you. Yeah, I, I I had had the idea a year ago, but um, it had slowly come together in pieces and finding the. The melodies as you get going and you know starting with like soundscapey stuff and fiddling and finding a form out of it all is is, is real fun 
I genuinely love that. So you had the idea initially to... to... Uh, my original yeah. init- like initial idea was Creepy Christmas. Creepy Christmas. A, uh, a, cra- a what is it called? A cra- cras- cras- cra- Crankus? Crank- Crankus. Crampus? Crampus. Crampus. That's what I... That's what... Yeah, that's what it should be. That's yeah. the album. But... Yeah, we'll, um, wow. we'll, we'll get that sorted. Um, all right. So should I send you through mine? Please, I can't wait. Okay, so um, so my thinking this year, I, I so we've done a couple of uh, we've done what well, this is the third time we've done the annual yeah, three Christmas years. song. Yeah, we can officially uh, call it an annual Christmas song now. <laughs> yeah, but at this at this at this point, we've got six songs. Yeah, by next year we'll have eight. Yeah, by twenty twenty three we'll have ten songs, which is a Christmas oh, that's an album. album. Yeah, and I. And I'm expecting at that we will point we'll need to package it and release it. We're both going to have enough money, and I hope that one of us <laughs> has has the wherewithal to and the financial uh, backing yeah. to put this on wax. Because I think <laughs> you want I it on vinyl. I want this shit on vinyl, dude. <laughs> and, I'm get, and we're going to press five copies, and that's yeah. it. That, I mean, it's probably um, going to be more expensive than pressing a hundred, but sure. So. I was at a loss this year. Okay. I throughout the lockdown, as we spoke about earlier, we thought that 2021 was going to be the the year that relieved us from COVID. Yeah. And as we got closer to Christmas, as we got to July in Melbourne, I mean, it started to feel like Christmas may not be on the cards our chris our, our covid spikers were, uh, covid cases were at the highest level that they were at and it felt like and i wrote this thro- this song uh through until november it felt as though i wasn't going to be home for christmas and i this christmas cri- christmas is unusually important to me mm. Well, more so now that I have moved into state, but I I love Christmas so much. It's like seriously one of my most favorite p- moment uh, times of year. I love it. I love my family. I love hanging out with them. I love getting pissed with them. I love arguing with them. I love everything about it. And the idea that I wasn't going to be able to get home to Christmas and still to this. I'm re- I'm flying out in two days. Yeah, I, I, ca- COVID cases are still increasing. They're spiking at the moment. They could spike further. Yeah, I still don't even know if I'm going to get home. So I wrote a song about not being home for Christmas. I, yeah. I, I completely we've joked out, out my previous songs in the past, and both of us have been kind of, uh, you know, uh, you know. A joke. Joke. Yeah, there's, there's, there's been... we have two modes, right? It's either sincere or it's joke, and so we've we've all we've both done both. So this year I've gone completely. This not this. By the way, this don't expect a joke in this. <laughs> there's no, there's no joke. I I've wanted to. I love this tradition that we write a Christmas song, but I love Christmas songs, and I wanted to write a Christmas song that was true to the feeling. At the time, but also a genuine Christmas song. Yeah. I so love what it. I've written here is a Christmas song, an ode to the idea that I might not be home for Christmas, and it's called "I Won't Be Home for Christmas." Very simple. I love it. Um, and I I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Do Wait, you want to let count me get me down. Yeah. Okay, you down. Um, you got it cranked up because it's got to be played loud. Dude. Yeah. All right. That's Christmas. Christmas, baby. Stop. 
Stage head, baby. Fuck yeah. Mate, that's so fucking good, good. How good is that? Oh, I'm so annoyed. Not annoyed. That's not the right word. I'm so grateful and angry and excited. And fuck that. I just immediately want to listen to it again. That yeah. is, that is. That's good. That is killer. That is so fucking good. I really Dude, feel like this it's year. It's a Christmas is our, song, right? It's a Christmas song. Christmas but song. This, I feel like this year is our best year yet. Um, yeah. I, I love I love the fact that it plays with all these like chord progressions that you know, like that's part of the thing of Christmas. Christmas music is having that sense of that comfort of the shape of a song, and and you play with some of those familiar like chord progressions in the chorus and that sort of stuff. And it's so comforting, and it's so sad and wistful and yeah. sincere and beautiful. Oh, I I sincerely loved it. I really I'm glad you say that. Properly loved it. I love that there's like a that extra bar um, at the end of like each uh, verse line. That just extra little pause before you come back in is just so so like Dude. refined and lovely. Oh, I I had shivers. I I love. I I read that song like six months ago and had been like working like tinkering away on it for over the you, course you of... had a version of this that you completely lost right so oh yeah that's that's something so i i about about maybe six or seven months ago i was working on a song and i, I on my christmas song i had an idea for it and then i just completely i don't know how i did it but i completely wiped the entire song off my computer record and i couldn't find it and i was like i have to start again but then I had like this epiphany one day and I was like, okay, I got this other idea and I completely started anew. So there's like some, maybe on, on my computer somewhere or on my Google drive or something, I have like a version of another song. It yeah. was like kind of similar in tone, but I knew that I wanted to write a song that was completely serious. No jokes. Well, you, a complete you do say Christmas song. if I'm correct. You'll save money on beer. That was okay. That's so, the closest you get to a to a joke. So my dad actually, um, so I, I I've been going back and forth with my dad on this song. So shout out to my dad. Yeah. Uh, he like he gave some he gave some tips uh, and get and my dad actually really loved this song because he was the, the in, in in past he's he's been looking forward to our Christmas songs and he's never, never liked been. any of the songs. <laughs> <laughs> never like. Never liked any of them. Yeah. His feedback has always been, I mean, I don't know and know what planet Nick's going on, yeah. but like you, Michael, I mean, you're a, you know, you studied music, yeah, music. And, yeah. and you should know better. Yeah. Um, and he's like, everything's a joke to you guys. And I'm not saying I did this to please my dad, although, you know, my <laughs> psychologist you know. might have something to say about that. <laughs> but, but I genuinely, I love Christmas songs and I want to, since we started this tradition, I wanted to make a Christmas song that was sincere from the heart. And I thought, what is from the what what Christmas song can I write from the heart right now? And it's that I don't know if I'm going to be home from Christmas, and that makes me sad. Yeah, and that's the point at which I wrote. And uh, I feel like that's I'm so happy with the song. Yeah, I'm so you happy with be. the song. It sounds Christmassy to me. The crazy yes. thing to me is that I look at this on on SoundCloud and it says uploaded one month ago because I finished my version of, my, like, the, the final version of my song that I was happy with. I finished roughly two hours before we started. Oh, really? <laughs> I, sent, I spent this afternoon polishing the final version yeah. of it, yeah. Well, I... I um, but you didn't, so my... you didn't need to touch that. Like, you had a month because there was nothing you need to do with that song. It's, it is I, as it needs I, to I, be. I worked on it. I worked on it so hard for for a period of two months, and then like this is like in October. And it, by the way, it's 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 weird 
trying to write a Christmas song in like fucking September, like <laughs> when there's nothing Christmassy going on. Yeah, and you're just trying to like get in the Christmas zone. Yeah, and then all of it, all it takes is a couple of samples of sleigh bells, and you're like, yeah, there, there we are. Baby. That's, that's I'm, the I'm Frank sound. Sinatra over here. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, I did finish that a month ago, and yeah. I sat in it for a month, and I listened back to it on SoundCloud, and I was just like, you know what? I'm happy with it. You know, the so, interesting thing, because I, I had had this idea, I think I had told you immediately, so last year I did the rap, right? I did the, yeah. the diss track, Dismas. By the um, way, I still listen to that, and it still makes me laugh. <laughs> I'm glad. Um, I, I had messaged you, like, I think almost immediately after we recorded and said, I know what song I'm going to do next year. And just out of curiosity, I looked at the file on, on this song here, and it was created 21st December... 2020 so i had i had started fucking around with ideas for this track before christmas last year um and wow. obviously it hadn't come together in a serious way till probably midway through this year but even so um it, I, like i i i'm always love that this is one part of this show that we will happily spend literal months on literal I, months I, on I, I, a disproportionate amount of time yeah on. like it's not it's not it's not worth it <laughs> <You know? laughs> i i 100 disagree it, but, yeah but it, no, it's, but it's it absurdly is, it it's absurdly it. invested yeah but do, do, it's so in keeping with this podcast like we we have like two listeners we've been doing it for eight years yeah and yet we still keep doing uh, what i as i grow older and this is tying it back to you know lessons learned as we get older doing things for for no other reason other than it makes you happy and you, it brings you joy that yeah. is the best reason to do things 100%. and just doing things not because there's no there's no goal at the end of it other than just to my goal my goal is just to make you laugh and smile when we do this podcast and when we do a christmas songs that's the only thing i care about yeah if other people get a kick out of it, cool. But that's the only thing I care about, and that, I know it's the same for you. So, like that is that is the beauty of this pod and and of of this tradition. I yeah. love it, dude. And you sincerely made an incredible piece of music. Like that's the benefit of it is that you walk away with something like to hold in your hands. I mean, it's music. You can't, but you know metaphorically like a real thing oh, that I'll, exists. Be releasing, I'll be releasing the, the, the <laughs> i'll be releasing mugs with the lyrics so you can <laughs> actually hold it in your hands oh. stay tuned for that oh man what a pleasure what a delight merry christmas yeah, michael man. thank merry you christmas for you, another year of lovely work and I, I can't wait to see what next year brings oh i love it man and uh and congratulations on all your success over this year and to you Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone. And to all a good night. Yes, it sounds very horny. It's just weird. You know it's just a weird tone. It'll be blood.